the last picture taken of him before he died. I went to a party precisely one year after he'd give, given up the ghost. Coincidentally, everyone who had ever known him was in attendance. This ranged from his teenage son to people he had barely uttered so much as a few words to. The women responsible for throwing the event were giggling like preschoolers when I arrived. A word had been misspelled on the cake, and for whatever reason, they found this infinitely amusing. His name came up in a conversation. The partygoers were surprised to learn of his death. I assumed it was common knowledge. Apparently, it wasn't. The woman guilty of having misspelled the word on the cake stopped laughing for a second. She looked over at me. He died, she asked. I noticed that she had icing on her shirt. The boyish modesty of her clothes failed to subdue her beauty. Yes, I stammered. Was this the girl I thought it was? I added, he suffered considerably before he went. I regretted saying this the moment I had opened my mouth. I didn't want to be a buzzkill, but uh, there it was. A chunky blonde who was still joking around with the other ladies interjected. Out of the side of her face, she said, Are you talking about that creepy dude? It's good that he suffered. He deserved to. He was mean to people. There was something about him that made me uncomfortable whenever he was around. Good riddance. The world will be a better place without him. I was a tad taken aback by this statement. How could she say something so insensitive and still keep a smile on her face? Had she even registered the gravity of what she just said to me? I didn't know the deceased man very well, but if I had, what if I had been his close friend? She had taken no consideration of this before speaking, but, uh, but I kept my cool. Um, he used to write these really sick, obscene st stories, laughed the uh, girl with frosting on her sleeve. It was a nervous laugh. Whatever happened to what he wrote, I heard he was quite prolific. Aside from what little he published, everything he wrote was destroyed, I responded. His aunt went to great lengths to do this. She hated his writing. Um, she thought it was of it as nothing more than filthy dog roll, uh, the product of a der deranged mind and a stain on the family name. The depressing subject was dropped, and the, the, the celebrant soon sat down to eat. Nothing more was said about my dead acquaintance. Uh, the bright red juice mixed with the sugary cake and the childish decor of the room contradicted my dark memory of the unsuccessful writer. Out of nowhere, I had received several texts from him days before he died. Perhaps I was the only one left for him to talk to. His, his friends had denounced him as a madman and his family had cut him off. Judging by the morbid nature of his final words to me, I can understand why. He wrote in broken sentences. Much of what he stated stated to me made little, if any, sense, and he would contact me at the most ungodly hours of the night. They made me worse, he texted me. Who he, who, who he was referring to by they remains unclear to me to this day. Society, the system, uh, all of the above. The text continued. They told me to be honest and then condemned me for being inappropriate. They called me antisocial, but not, would not return my calls. They told me I was ill, but chast my, chastised me as villainous. I have been punished when all I ever wanted was to be comforted in, in this life. Back when I actually possessed so much as a murmur of a voice, I thought I was speaking for everyone. Um, but they thought I was only joking. Another text read simply, I'm told that some are sicker than others. Am I the quote, sum of the others, or the sum of the others. I tried to make light of these ominous messages by tarrying, tarrying them with my usual sarcasm. Every time I'd attempt to engage him in dialogue, he would abruptly sign off, a, re a reaction I interpreted as, as rather rude. Uh, on the final night of our co correspondence, I became worried for his welfare. He sent me a rambling text laced with expletives, which led me to believe he could be dangerous. With the intention of getting him some help, I asked him where he was. Instead of providing, providing me with an address, he sent me a slew of pictures he had taken with his phone. I'm assuming he'd taken them at the, that very moment to illustrate his whereabouts to me. 
The photos revealed a blurry procession of streetlights, the black sky taking up much of the lonely landscape. None of the, none of the shots were worth keeping, but there was one that stood out from the rest. It was a selfie of him sitting on a bench in a deserted playground somewhere in the middle of the night. I kept it. It's still on my phone. You can tell he's he was on his last legs in the photo. His uh, clothes were ragged. His ex his expression was monochromatic. Uh, his skin was pale. He lost the glimmer in his eyes. It was last. It was the last picture taken of him before he died. 